Hi, I'm Tara Nilees, the Global Applications Manager here at EDAX. I'd like to talk to you about one of our newest software features called Spectrum Library Matching. This is an exciting new addition to the EDAX team software packet. Very often, our customers and users of microanalysis systems will ask, what is this? They'll look at an electron image and try to understand what's going on with the sample or what the material is. Of course, that's exactly what microanalysis is. So if we look at the definition of microanalysis, we see that it's the chemical identification and quantitative analysis of very small amounts of chemical substances or very small surfaces of materials. And that's exactly what our users hope to use the EDAX team systems for, even more so using spectral matching to be able to get a definitive answer to that question. Applications of microanalysis, and specifically the spectrum matching, can be ranging from, say, failure analysis to materials, alloys, and raw material testing, as well as quality control and even reverse engineering of process refinement. When we analyze a material, we start first with an electron image, and we often see that there's a distribution of materials. That image allows us to understand what the sample looks like. We then take it further with microanalysis by doing a phase map so that we can understand the spectral chemistry from each pixel in a map set. That spectrum chemistry gives us a good understanding of what chemical elements are in the material as well as where they're located. But of course, we still ask the question, what is it? So even in a spectrum, for example, where we get calcium, sulfur, and oxygen, we don't always know what it is. So what we then do is take quantitative analysis, and in one example, we look at the atomic percentages and notice that there is a ratio of oxygen, calcium, and sulfur in a 4 to 1 to 1 ratio. From there, we could infer that it's a compound, or CaSO4. And if we know a little bit about materials and chemistry, or we do some Google searching, we could usually find that that's calcium sulfate. And if we investigate even further, we could even understand that, well, calcium sulfate, when found in a material such as the brake pad that we're analyzing, might be used for process control to be able to make sure that the material has good dispersion, or also to make sure that the material is cost effective where, for example, calcium sulfate allows you to use a low dosage without reducing your quality. Of course, there are other benefits that satisfy other groups, such as environmentally friendly use of calcium sulfate in a brake pad material. And from a user perspective, we all like to drive cars that have lower brake pad noise or have long life cycles. So understanding the materials inside of our samples are very important for so many different applications. And that's where spectrum library matching comes into play. It's a quick and convenient method for identifying compounds present in the material and allows you to match an unknown spectrum to a library of reference spectrum. Therefore, an analyst can conclusively identify a material without having to rely strictly on data interpretation, quantitative analysis, or prior knowledge. The Spectrum Library program goes in two parts. The first part is building a library of materials. And this is done off of any EDAX team system. Even if you've had your system for many years, you could go back and search through the entire database of your spectra to be able to create a library of those spectra. You can also search by different parameters for your spectra. So for example, if you wanted to build a library and filter by date or elemental concentration, even analysis conditions, you can do so. That library can be saved. The other nice thing about the library is that you could share it with other sites or different users. The next aspect of the, the software feature is that you use that library to then compare as a basis for your subsequent unknown spectra. From there, you say collect a spectrum from an unknown material and click on the match button and then it will allow you to see what your spectra matches to, what, uh, what your fit tolerances are. When you do a spectrum match, you take your unknown spectra and then you reference it against the library that you built. Once you click that button, it pulls up the closest matches out of your spectra library. 
Those matches will overlay on your unknown spectrum, and it also will give you a fit tolerance based on how close or how different your unknown is to the materials in your library. In an example that we show here, we've built a library based off of a mineral standard. And this is using a common SPI mineral standard under typical microscope conditions on an EDAC system. Each spectra was collected for only 20 seconds to build a library. We then analyzed an automotive brake pad as our composite sample. From there, we took spectra from different areas in the sample. And in this case, the bright feature was selected as our analysis location. We gathered the spectra. And then we clicked on the match button. The match tells us that that spectrum from that bright area in the composite sample matches the mineral barite with a 92% fit value. We could take the analysis even further and combine it with the power of automatic phase mapping. In auto phase mapping, we ran a high quality map for one hour. At the end of the map, the auto phase selection gave us not just the phase distribution in the image of the phase map, but also gave us the phase spectra from each of those different areas. Those phase spectra are actually all areas that have like chemistry. In this case, the pink spectra was used for the basis for comparison. And we could see that the pink spectra from the phase from the map matches stibnite at 79%. So just simply by clicking on the match button, we're able to say the spectrum matches barite, or the phase spectrum from the map matches a different mineral. And we can continue doing this for other examples, such as the strontium sulfite that we also see in the map set. By combining the power of spectrum library matching with phase mapping, any analyst could get a comprehensive, yet easy to accomplish match and identification for the material in your sample.